What's up, guys? It's Mr. Bringle, and today we're going to be talking about angled forces on free body diagrams. And uh, you should have this worksheet here. What we're actually going to do is start with number three and go through number five, and then we'll come back to one and two because those are a little bit more specific. So the first one here that we have is a wrecking ball that's pulled horizontally. And what I mean by that, that was a terribly unstraight line, is imagine we have a wrecking ball here and um, you might even imagine that, say, you know, I don't know, Miley Cyrus is on the wrecking ball. She's coming in like a wrecking ball. And um, then the wrecking ball is pulled back so that it can then swing into a building, right? So it's at this fixed point up here, and then it's pulled to the right. So then after it's been pulled, it might look something like this, right? We still have that fixed point, but now it's out here. We've got the ball there. And... Miley is still hanging on. Okay. Um, so this is a constant pull force right here, an applied force of the ball being pulled back, right? So what we're going to do is we are going to, um, on all of our free body diagrams that involve angled forces and really any of them moving forward, I really want you to go ahead and make a, an X and a Y axis. Um, and I, I always make it, you know, with a dotted line here. And then we're going to draw our forces on top of that. And that is very important here because the way that we recognize angled forces on a free body diagram are that they're not going to be on the X or the Y axis, right? So that's kind of our indication of, oh, is this force angled or not, right? So we know the obvious ones. We've been talking about this plenty here. We have FG, which is pointed down. The weight of the ball is always pointed straight down. Um, and then we know that we have this applied force right here, right? Here's our applied force, FA, that's pulling to the right. But then instead of, say, with the first picture here, where you would have no applied force, you would have the weight pointed down, and then you would just have tension pointed up. The difference here is that the tension is now pulling this direction, right? Just like the tension pulls straight up when um, the object is hanging straight up and down, when you're pulling on that rope from an angle, it's also going to cause this to be an angled force here. And um, so we might draw it, say something like that, put our arrow on here, and then this we would label as the tension force. And as you can see here, this force is not on the y-axis. It's not on the x-axis. So this is what we would refer to as an angled force. Now, we're going to go a little bit more in depth with this in the next part on a lot of people will then ask, well, how does that work with, you know, Newton's laws and balanced forces? Like the applied force has nothing on the opposite side. There's nothing that's counterbalancing the applied force. And same thing with the weight of the ball. How is it not moving? Um, that basically what happens here, I'll just intro it and then we'll talk about this a lot more later. You can see that this basically creates a triangle um, for the tension force. And the kind of thing we have to think about here is when you pull something up at an angle, part of your pull is upward and part of it is to the side. In this case, part of the tension is pulling up and part of the tension is pulling to the left. And it's this portion of the tension force that balances out the applied force. And it's also this portion of the tension force here that balances out the weight. Okay, so um, we call those components. So there's basically these two components to that tension force, a vertical component and a horizontal component. We'll get into that in more detail later. Um, for number four here, we have a lawnmower being pushed down at an angle. So let's imagine that we have, this is my lawnmower, and uh, that's about as good as it's going to get. Um, so here I am pushing down on it uh, with my hands, right? And it's kind of this, uh, this push that's down like this, right? I guess I should give myself a head there. Um, so there's this downward push. You're not exactly pushing the lawnmower horizontally. You're kind of pushing down and at an angle. Um, so we'll do the free body diagram for the uh, for the lawnmower here. And I will go ahead and make my X and Y axis. OK, 
Okay. And we'll start assigning forces. Now this one is interesting here because we basically have the weight of the lawnmower down and I'm going to hold off on the normal force for a second, but there would be a normal force pointed up, but I'm going to, we're going to hold off on that. Okay. And then we're, we know that there's going to be friction um, pointed to the left here in the opposite direction of movement. And then our angled force is going to be this diagonal here. And the reason why I held off on the normal force is because in this scenario, what's going on is you have, imagine that the lawnmower is sitting on the ground by itself. Let's say it weighs, I don't know, six newtons, doesn't matter, six newtons. Well, then the normal force that supports the lawnmower when it's sitting still is six newtons in the opposite direction. But when you push down a little bit on that lawnmower, you're basically increasing the weight of the lawnmower in terms of the force that the ground is experiencing, right? I'm pushing down on it. I'm adding force. And therefore, the normal force has to increase to balance that out. It'd be no different than if I added um, another lawnmower on top of it. And now there's a lawnmower sitting on a lawnmower. Well, that would double the weight. And therefore, the normal force would have to double. In this scenario, I'm manually increasing the weight, so to speak, by pushing down on the lawnmower a little bit. So the normal force is no longer equal to the weight of the lawnmower. In fact, the weight of the lawnmower plus the additional downward push that I give will now be balanced by the normal force. So the point that I'm getting at here is if we kind of go back and, and draw our triangles again, part of the push, and let me label this quickly. This is my applied force right here. And part of that applied force is pointed down like this, right? Part of it's pointed down. And then the other portion is pointed to the right. And that's the portion that balances out with the friction. Um, or, I mean, it could be more or less. It depends on if this lawnmower is being moved at a constant velocity or not. But the point that I'm getting at here is when you look at these two red arrows, the weight of the lawnmower and then the downward portion of my applied force right here, when you add these two arrows together, that is what will be equal to the normal force. So the normal force... Uh, might actually be something, you know, a lot larger like this than the weight of the lawnmower, which is different from what we've looked at before, right? We've always looked at examples where normal force basically balances out the weight of the object. So in this one, we do have to consider there is an additional downward force here. Um, part of my push is pushing down. And so we have to add that on to the weight, and then that will be the value of our normal force. So in this thing, the one thing I want you to recognize and write on your paper is that Normal force is not equal to gravity here, okay? Normal force is not equal to gravity. And then we'll kind of dive into that in a little more in depth another time. Okay, let's look at the wagon being pulled by a rope up at an angle. Um, we'll go the other direction here. So here's me walking. I'm very happy. And here's this rope that's attached to the wagon. And my pull is upward at an angle here. So we go back and we make our X and Y axis per use. Okay, and um, go ahead and add in our forces here, which nothing new in terms of the weight of the, uh, the wagon here. Um, the weight of the wagon, FG. We know that we're gonna have friction pointed this direction in the opposite direction of movement. Um, we know there is a normal force, but I'm, I'm also gonna wait on that. And the reason for that is because our angled force here is now kind of doing the opposite of what happened in our last one. So if I have this angled force here pointed in this direction, 
this would be my applied force or actually my tension force for this one because it's a rope that's pulling on the wagon. Once again, I want you to recognize that when you pull something up at an angle, part of your pull is horizontal like this, which causes the object to move, right? You have to have a horizontal force to get it to move. And then part of the force is also vertical, right? Because I'm kind of pulling it up at an angle. And in this case, when we add in our normal force, we actually have two upward forces. Just like in our last one, we had two downward forces, right? And because the downward force of my push here kind of adds on to the weight of the lawnmower, we had to basically increase the value of the normal force. Well, this one's the opposite. When I pull up at an angle, I'm actually supporting some of the weight of the wagon myself and not all of the weight is pushing down on the ground anymore, right? Um, so what it becomes is basically the upward portion of that tension pull plus the normal force will be equal to the weight of the object. So when I kind of add in this normal force here, um, it has to, when I add it, together with that other red arrow off to the side here, this one, these two arrows should add up to be the length of this arrow. Uh, so again, kind of think about like, ignore the rope for a second. Imagine I have the lawnmower sitting on the ground and when it's sitting on the ground, you've got FG like this and you've got FN like this and they're equal. Okay. But now what happens is if I lift up on the lawnmower just a little bit, it's still on the ground, but I'm lifting up to where I'm feeling some of the weight of the lawnmower. Well, in terms of the, the ground, the ground would experience less of the weight of the lawnmower because now I'm supporting some of it. So therefore, its normal force will decrease to match whatever portion of the weight it is supporting. Uh, so since that normal force drops a little bit, um, that's not the actual force that's balancing with the weight of the wagon because the wagon still has the same weight overall, right? And so it's the combination of my upward pull tension and the normal force that will balance the true weight of the lawnmower, okay? So part of the ground is supporting it, partly me holding that rope, okay? Um, so now let's go back up to numbers one and two. And the reason why I wanted to save these is because these are a little bit more specific. Um, in this first example, we have a box sitting on a ramp here. So I'll just draw a quick uh, triangle. There's our, um, there's our ramp and I'm going to put the box right here and it's sitting on the ramp and it's not moving. Okay. And this is important because we understand that, um, you know, friction is acting on the box here. So I'm going to kind of draw the free body diagram um, with the box right here first. And then um, we'll go ahead and put it on our X and Y axis. And I think this will this will kind of help us visualize this here. Um, so as always, we know that the uh, that gravity is pushing down on the box and the weight of the box. That's always going to be pointed straight down. That never changes. Right. And then our normal force, our normal force um, is always going to be pointed perpendicular to the surface that the object is on. Let me change the color of this. So the perpendicular force would be pointed up like this. That would be our, the normal force right there. Okay. And then the last one. Um, would actually be, I'm messing up all of my colors here. This is ridiculous. Um, I want that one to be red and I want this one to be green to keep it consistent with other ones. This would be the friction holding the box, um, on the ramp, right? So I want you to see it like this first, because it'll make more sense when I show you what we have to do with our X and Y axis. So basically when an object is on an incline, our X axis has to tilt with the incline. So where the normal X axis would be drawn like this, uh, where it just goes horizontally through that, that black dot right there. Um, that's not the way we're going to draw the X axis when the box is on an incline. Instead, we're going to draw the X axis to be parallel 
to the surface and then the y axis would simply be perpendicular to that axis so it kind of looks like this and that is just um anytime an object is on an inclined surface you tilt the x axis and therefore the y axis to match or be parallel to the um, surface that the object is on so when i do my free body diagram i do have to sh go ahead and, and if this is my x-axis and y-axis and i'll go ahead and label these here so that um you know it's very clear this is the x-axis this is the y-axis and that's all just been tilted here okay go ahead and make our dotted lines and then we're just going to redraw that free body diagram that i've basically already drawn there but we show here the reason why i did the weight of the box in blue is because i've been doing all of the angled forces in blue right this is fg pointed straight down and it's not on the x or the y axis which is why this is the angled force the normal force is still along the y axis because it tilted along with the x axis right everything got tilted so the normal force is still along the y-axis. It's still pointed perpendicular to the surface. And then our uh, friction force, which is going to be right here, um, pointed in the opposite direction of where the box wants to move, holding it in place. Okay. So um, again, to just kind of touch on what happens here, since the weight of the box or gravity here becomes the angular force, we can make that similar triangle here where part of that force is pointed downward whoops part of that force is pointed down along the y-axis and part of that force is this way so that green arrow that i just drew is basically why things would slide down an incline think about yourself on a slide and you get on the slide and you know you might give yourself like a, a little bit of, of a I don't know, scoot to get going. But the point is that things will go down a slide on their own because gravity is pulling it down the slide. Now, it's not a completely vertical drop. So you're not experiencing the full force of gravity pulling you down the slide. It's a portion of your weight that is pulling you down the slide. So this part, this little green arrow right here represents a portion of your weight, the force due to gravity that is pulling you along this X axis. So I could actually take that green arrow and I could actually just move it up here like this. It's the same thing. And the red arrow is like this kind of, you know, creates a rectangle, so to speak, um, to show how that force acts along the X axis. So that force is being balanced out by the friction. Um, and then the normal force is being balanced out by that downward portion of the weight of the box. Okay. Um, all right, now skier moving down a slope at a constant speed. This is more just practice because, um, we just did an example like this. Um, but in this one, instead of not moving, the skier is moving at a constant velocity. So if I, um, I'll draw my, my person here. These are the skis. Um, And then those are the ski poles. Look at that. And we'll say they're going down here at a constant velocity. Um, so once again, what we need to do is we need to tilt our x-axis to be parallel. So the, the x-axis here is going to look like this with the y-axis like this, right? That's how we're going to do that for the skier. Um, I'm going to do it off to the side here. And so I'll just make my X axis similar to the incline. It should be identical to the incline of the slope, but that's okay if it's not identical. And then make your Y axis perpendicular. Again, I'm going to label these. Um, if I can get off of my line tool here, that's the Y axis. This is the X axis. We will go ahead and Get that on there okay so now the weight of the person um the force of gravity is pushing straight down notice that that is not on the uh x or the y axis here so that is my angled force i'm putting it in blue we know that friction is going to act this direction and we know the normal force is always going to be perpendicular I apologize for my non-straight lines here, uh, perpendicular to the surface that the object is on. 
And then again, if I kind of show you those, um, create that triangle here, part of the weight of the skier is actually pulling the skier down the slope along the X axis. So that would be this part right here. That's what's going to be balanced with that frictional force to create the constant velocity. My frictional force is possibly drawn a little bit too big here. I should probably shorten that some um, so that it balances out here with uh, this arrow. Basically, this arrow and this arrow should be equal and opposite. And then the normal force is balanced out by the portion of the weight that is along the y-axis here. There, finally, I got it right. Okay, so the, uh, the force of gravity is acting on this person, giving the person weight. The weight of the person is what makes the person want to slide down the hill on its own. Friction is what opposes that. And then the normal force is supporting the portion of the weight that is going into the ground uh, there. So um, these, this is kind of a uh, spark notes, quick hitter um, intro to angled free body diagrams. We will talk a lot more about those triangles and those um, component forces that make up an angular force. And um, we'll start to do some math with those.